Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. So, I guess I'm kind of late to this. Obviously, the Netflix adaptation of this is now out. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to, I, you know... I kind of, it seems like a good time to do the book review, because I do want it to be just about the book, as opposed to about the book and the series. So, um, so I've read the book, not seen the series. I'm going to start by reading the blurb here. We also have a quote by Neil Gaiman, an amazing writer, and down here, Stephen King. Stepping into Hill House is like stepping into the mind of a madman. Now, one of the reasons why I've wanted to read this book is because I know that Shirley Jackson is a big influence on King. I've read some of Jackson's short stories before. Funnily enough, I haven't read The Lottery. But I've read some of her other short stories before through my uh, Penguin Mini Moderns box set. Anyway, the blurb. Alone in the world, Eleanor is delighted to take up Dr. Montague's invitation to spend a summer in the mysterious Hill House. Joining them are Theodora, an artistic sensitive, and Luke, heir to the house. But what begins as a light-hearted experiment is swiftly proven to be a trip into their darkest nightmares, and an investigation that one of their number may not survive. Acclaimed as one of the finest ghost stories of the 20th century and filmed twice as The Haunting, this is an unsettling examination of how fear can make us our own worst enemy. And I think that's a big kind of, I guess, clue to the central themes of the book, that idea of fear making us our own worst enemy. It's almost as though the fear of Hill House is worse than Hill House itself. Another thing I wanted to mention is this is kind of reminds me of The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. It's got a similar kind of vibe to it, I think. Here, this quote, just this quote, I'm just going to read the quote with no context, because you don't need the context. Don't do it, Eleanor told the little girl. Insist on your cup of stars. Once they have trapped you into being like everyone else, you will never see your cup of stars again. Don't do it. And the little girl glanced at her, and smiled a little subtle, dimpling, wholly comprehending smile, and shook her head stubbornly at the glass. Brave girl, Eleanor thought. Wise, brave girl. And then, of course, you got the dude ruin everything. You're spoiling her, the father said. She ought not to be allowed these whims. One of the things that quote highlights is Shirley Jackson's writing style. It's just super absorbing, just beautifully written the whole thing all the way through. It's just, it's like reading poetry almost, but in the best possible sense. You're just reading, you're just reading words from a master craftsman or craftswoman, craftsperson. Here is another quote I really liked, and this reminds me of uh, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier and the way that du Maurier wrote about uh, um, Mrs. de Winter's first impressions of the house when they go to Manderley. The house was vile. She shivered and thought, the words coming freely into her mind. Hill House is vile. It is diseased. Get away from here at once. And I think that's, again, just a just really well written introduction to the house and it kind of gives you that fear, you know? Here's another quote. This is Dr. Montague. He says, My wife likes a man to wear a beard. Many women, on the other hand, find a beard distasteful. A clean-shaven man, you will excuse me, my boy, never looks fully dressed, my wife tells me. I like this as well. I can't remember who's, t who's talking. They're talking here about some of the history of the house, and this is really well done as well. I'm going to read you. This is quite a long paragraph, but... Uh... She should have gone away, Eleanor said, left the house and run as far as she could go. In effect, she... Sorry, let me do the voice. In effect, she did. I really think the poor girl was hated to death. She hanged herself, by the way. Gossip says she hanged herself from the turret on the tower, but when you have a house like Hill House with a tower and a turret, gossip would hardly allow you to hang yourself anywhere else. After her death, the house passed legally into the hands of the Sanderson family, who were cousins of hers and in no way as vulnerable to the persecutions of the younger sister, who must have been a little demented herself by that time. I heard from Mrs. Sanderson that when the family, it would have been her husband's parents, first came to see the house, the younger sister showed up to abuse them, standing on the road to howl at them as they went by, and found herself packed right off to the local police station. And that seems to be the end of the younger sister's part in the story. From the, from the day the first Sanderson sent her packing to the brief notice of her death a few days later, she seems to have spent her time brooding silently over her wrongs, but far away from the Sandersons. Oddly enough, in all her ranting, she always insisted on one point. She had not, would not, come into this house at night, to steal or for any other reason. Because you don't go into Hill House at night. I like this bit as well. So this is Mrs. Dudley and she says, Well, she asked, How do you gentlemen like living in a haunted house? It's perfectly fine, Luke said. Perfectly fine. It gives me an excuse to have a drink in the middle of the night. <laughs> what a lad. This also sounds like me. Uh, he, he goes, I'm entirely selfish and always hoping that someone will tell me to behave. Someone will make herself responsible for me and make me a grown-up. He is altogether selfish, 
she thought in some surprise. The only man I've ever sat and talked to alone, and I am impatient. He is simply not very interesting. Why don't you grow up by yourself? She asked him, and wondered how many people, how many women, had already asked him that. You're clever. And how many times had he answered that way? This conversation must be largely instinctive, she thought with amusement, and said gently, You must be a very lonely person. All I want is to be cherished, she thought, and here I am talking gibberish with a selfish man. You must be very lonely indeed. He touched her hand and smiled again. You were so lucky, he told her. You had a mother. So yeah, I'm not going to talk any more about it. I did really enjoy it though. Uh, rating time, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Very well written. Like I say, I think it was the suspense in particular that was done well. A lot of the descriptions, a lot of the dialogue, the characterization, just all you know masterfully done uh, there's a reason it's a modern classic and you should definitely check it out especially if you're on the fence so on that note thanks as always for watching don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so what you thought of it hit subscribe for more and i will see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye bye